Hello, welcome back to Tiny Nest. I'm Kiva. And I'm Jake. This is another episode in our building series. Where we show the construction of our toilet box. Quite a bit of time has passed in between when we built our toilet box and now when we're editing the footage and filming this intro. And we've recently been talking about a few changes that we want to make. So the construction of the actual box will be the same, but some of the ducting and venting that we mentioned, as well as some of the inner workings of the toilet box might change a bit. So watch this video to see how we got what we have now and make sure that you're subscribed to see how we update it. So before we box this up and make it super awkward to work inside here, we're gonna drill the hole and get the piping through for where our pee is gonna drain out. And so this is something that we've been thinking about over quite a long time, like what our options were. And we had at one point sort of decided we'd just buy, like go the simple route and buy a, uh, it's either called a Weepy or like a separate, there's different brands, but it's basically just like an insert, plastic insert that goes into a regular size uh, toilet seat opening. And the front section has a little sort of funnel like shape and then a hose that comes off of it. But that Canadian shipped was like over 150 bucks. It's just like a piece of plastic. And that also the hose is centered, um, which can be a problem with how we've got it here because we're gonna have our compost bucket, which will just be like a five gallon type bucket <clears throat> in behind that. And then the door opens like this. So it's gonna be hard to get it past something that's right here. Uh, so, We've got this funnel, this is like $11, and it used to be a big, like a big thing, and I've cut a bunch of it off, and it was actually an off-center thing to begin with, so I kind of went with that and basically sort of did multiple tests, and uh, this has evolved a bit over time, but basically it's going to mount like this to the underside of the, the bench here, and go off to the side, so that actually gives maximum room here to manipulate the bucket and kind of get in there. So that's going to work really well. And so now all we need to do is figure out where the tubing is going to go. So it's going to connect to the bottom of the, the funnel spout down here. And uh, this is basically a good spot. There's a, st a joist like right under here, right up against the fender boxing. Uh, and then the axle for the one of the, the, the axles under here is like right there. So uh, worked out well, there's just enough space, and I used a coat hanger to just poke a hole straight through, and uh, it's poking down, and I'll show you where it's come out underneath. All right, I'm awkwardly underneath the trailer here, but you can see where the coat hangers come down. So we're, we're good this way, and it's kind of close to the axle here, and that's one of the good things about doing the coat hanger trick is that now we have a um, solid frame of reference of where we are when we uh, begin our drill. So we'll just maybe bias it an extra half an inch or so that way. And this is the tubing we're going to be using. So it, it's not that thick. Uh, it shouldn't have a problem. And it's a bit flexible as well. So uh, we should be able to make this work. So obviously the floor is full of insulation and if we just ram something down there, we're gonna just catch and um, like compress the insulation. So I just taken the uh, Roxol knife here and sort of carefully twisted and sort of did a bit of a drilling motion. And I think I've kind of made a, a path and now I'm just gonna try to like open it up a bit so that when we push the tube through it goes through this opening rather than, yeah, just basically we don't want to mess up the insulation under here if we can avoid it. Okay, I'm back underneath and here's the old hole, the original coat hanger. And then I popped a new coat hanger down because we moved the hole forward a little bit. So I'm going to try to just cut out a bit of a hole here. And what's actually gonna work better is we're gonna push the tubing up from below. And that way, if anything, we're pushing insulation up towards the floor rather than creating a gap directly under the floor, which would be worse. Okay, I just uh, cut a hole in the aluminum flashing here just with a knife. Just poked it through a bunch of times and pulled the 
pull the chunk out. And, and I'm kind of, uh, I've met up with the sort of hole that I made in the insulation. And I'm just kind of widen it from this end. I can see the light when I look up there. And so now I'm just going to try to ram the tubing up there and hope that uh, it goes through fairly smoothly. I am in the toilet room waiting for the tube. There you go. Okay. Okay. Okay, after a little bit of fussing around, we got the tube through the hole. <laughs> Here's the tubing for the P-funnel, and we'll be sliding a hose clamp over like that. And we picked this size of tubing because it will allow the uh, funnel to fit into it. So the funnel has these sort of funny ridges on it. Uh, so I'm gonna file those off so it's perfectly smooth all the way around. And then we'll basically just ram this in until it's wedged tight and then slide the clamp over and tighten it down. And that should be good enough um, for drainage. Like it's not gonna be under pressure. So uh, it's not like anything's gonna come leaking out of here. And obviously we wouldn't want that, especially for this application. But uh, that's kind of how we started. We looked around for a funnel that seemed like it would be the right size and or shape um, to work. And then once we had it, uh, we picked tubing that would be able to connect to it. For the toilet box that's gonna have a bucket represented here by our garbage for solids and uh, a basically a funnel to a drainage tube for liquids. Um, we had decided when we put the flooring down that uh, we would just build it right up to the edge of the doorway here. So obviously we just ended the flooring there and that way we could put this framing right down onto the subfloor and screw it in without having to mess with the flooring. And so that's what we've done. Uh, it's just two by twos. There's sort of a bottom plate, some sort of mini studs here, and then like a top plate that goes all the way across. <clears throat> and then for the perimeter, uh, we just screwed in some scraps of wood basically. Uh, and that way we can lay the bench right on top and then fasten it around the perimeter and then trim to cover the edge there. And over here, um, we'll probably do this, uh, the details of this when we get into this sort of air exchanging system, but um, we figured out that the way the fender is over here, the sink cabinet door will not be able to open um, and we're basically going to drill through it and pass a duct just along here and then it's going to enter this little space and then that will allow airflow to go through this enclosure and we're going to do some things to sort of air seal this and it'll be part of the air circuit basically. Um, so that was another thing we had to figure out when we were laying out this framing that we were going to be able to get in with a three inch duct and then also uh, we had measured a regular toilet in the house to see how high it was, so we thought we'd just match that height. Um, <clears throat> that was not high enough for a five gallon bucket. And also when I came to do it, I of course realized that uh, that little electrical box there uh, would be interfering. So we just went just high enough so that it wouldn't interfere with that. Uh, and it's just a couple inches higher and right now the bucket does actually pass through here. However, you'll see when the funnel goes in, uh, we probably will have to cut the bucket down a tiny bit, have a slightly shorter bucket. So here's the top piece. Obviously there's a cutout for the toilet seat and there's two holes down here uh, to mount the seat. Uh, we've just got a sort of generic standard seat to go on there. And there's a hole over here that's for the ducting, as you'll see eventually. but this turned out really awesome, uh, the look of it, and we just used like an off-the-shelf uh, stain. Uh, and the material is one good side 
three quarter inch plywood. Just super basic. And we took the time to um, stain it and give it multiple coats of the clear, um, sort of clear coat protective stuff that we've been putting on a lot of stuff. The same stuff we used on our uh, feature walls and on the loft planks. So after doing one cut to get rid of a big part of the material that was this funnel, I uh, held it up and kind of squished it and just tried to figure out how it should sit and then cut it again and then just basically kept at it until I, I could get a flat surface that would actually mate nicely with this wood. But then also I uh, afterwards made a bit of a scooped cut here so that it's not too close to where we'll be sitting so that it's not, you know, right in your personal space. So ended up with this. And as you can see, I just use these metal brackets and stainless steel screws and nuts. And because this is kind of a soft plastic, I think it's a good enough gasket. It's not like these will be in direct contact with liquid. Most of the liquid's gonna go, you know, down in here. So I think it's gonna be fine as is. Um, we probably will put a silicone bead around this edge because it's just gonna be in contact with the wood here and any kind of liquid getting around it would be bad. So anyway, I'm just gonna show, uh, I've already obviously um, had this attached to test it and make sure that it's, it's all good and went through a sort of process of adding one of these brackets at a time to make sure that I was flexing it the right way to mate it with the wood. And uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna fix it here. All right, and there we go. It's really, really solid. It's not going anywhere. And you can probably tell that it's kind of squished and flexed, and that was intentional. I lined up all the holes and made the cut such that it would kind of have to be in this elongated shape to fit. And we um, originally had it a bit closer to the front, but then not enough of the funnel was uh, accessible. Um, you know, from from the toilet seat hole. So we pushed it back so that more of it was in there, trying to sort of compromise so that we'll be able to uh, use it, but also use the bucket, which will be back here. This is kind of mirrored, obviously. This is the front of the, the toilet um, seat area. So pretty much looks like that. And I think it's gonna uh, work out well. And here's the front part with the door so we can open up and access the bucket and whatnot. And uh, basically use the exact same technique as our utility box door, where this is just one piece of plywood and did straight cuts here. And then this one is a bit of an angled cut so that it kind of closes into it. Um, and then just hinges and little deadbolt things. And we use small hardware because the trim uh, is gonna be pretty tight on there. The perimeter is very thin just because of the way it needs to line up with the uh, framing of the box, as will become evident when we uh, go to install it. But this hole is for the ducting, for the basically the duct entering into the box. Okay, so this is gonna be a bit tricky just because I'm gonna aim for a nice finish, um, but I also need to sort of break up the steps at the same time. And what I mean by that is um, we've got this trim that's gonna go here, and the thickness of the plywood is slightly more than the thickness of the flat edges on here. And so what, what would happen is you'd see kind of like a, a bit of a step uh, between this piece and the trim. But what I did was just use a knife and shaved off a tiny bit of material here so that I could actually get them closer together. And that will allow for a perfectly smooth transition if I line it up just right. And then the other 
thing though is that it would probably be a good idea to get the top piece down first then deal with the funnel and the tubing get that connected before putting this on i should be able to open the door and work in there but the door probably won't open all the way and i'll be banging it around and stuff so i'm gonna have to use this to line up the trim get this nailed down move this away deal with that in there bring it back get it lined up again and then affix this so that's the plan i think Okay, I think I've got this side pretty good here. Both uh, seams seem okay, so I'm gonna shoot. I'll just double check the gap here. Okay, I'm just gonna shoot one nail into uh, this corner. And then I'll be able to pivot it on that spot without losing the alignment here. Okay, I think that's gonna be good. Uh, making sure to press the actual pieces tight into the framing and the trim so that I know that when it's, you know, fastened down hard, that's how it's gonna sit. And I think that'll be good. So I'm gonna just take away this stuff and finish fastening the top down and then I'll work inside there. And the one tricky thing about fastening this down is that because the trim is not actually going to cover this edge here, like I can fasten down around the perimeter right through the, the top surface because it, trim is going to go over that, but because this trim is essentially in front of it, if I put any nails through it like this to fasten into this piece of wood, then uh, they'll be visible. And so to avoid that, I'm going to attempt to fire some nails at an angle through the face here, into here, and I can then tap them down um, so nothing is protruding and interfering with this, and then this will cover it. Alright, so this stuff is flexible but quite stiff and I need to get it onto the funnel here and I probably could just crank it over but rather than fighting a lot of resistance and possibly like putting a lot of stress on the funnel I'm going to use this awesome hair dryer to heat it up and uh, make my life a little bit easier and of course I've got to have my clamp on first and I got um, a little bit of uh, pipe strapping that I'm going to put on here. I got everything I need to make this happen. All right, uh, got it nice and warm and helped a little bit, and I managed to sort of twist it up and work it up high onto the funnel spout. Got the pipe clamp on there. Pretty confident with that connection. And I'm just gonna put this little strap down here so that it's not likely to, uh, so that it's not likely to get yanked while we're working with the rest of it down below. So since there was a bit of a gap left in the opening through the foil that we passed the uh, drainage tubing through, I figured that might be somewhere the bugs could get into. So I just wrapped some of that good old sill gasket around the tube, kind of wiggled it up and wedged it to basically seal up that gap and then just taped it so it won't slide down. And we can even move this around a bit and the sort of puffiness of the sill gasket should maintain a seal there. It's not meant to be an air barrier. This, this bottom layer is not airtight but just to prevent some kind of infestation. All right, it's not quite as perfect as I was hoping, but it's pretty good. And uh, the door 
operates pretty well. I actually, I, I think a nail hit uh, a knot or something when I was nailing in here and actually shot through the door. And so the first time I opened it, it wouldn't open and I was like, oh my god, what is going on? And I actually had to take a reciprocating saw blade by hand and get it in there and, and uh, weaken the nail and, until I could break it. Luckily I didn't totally mess up the finish here, so that's all good. Uh, but then the other thing I realized was um, I already knew that the uh, bucket wouldn't be able to come out of here. Uh, so I, I thought I had built the bucket in, but luckily um, it can turn and come out. Obviously we can't do that when we're using it, <clears throat> so we will still have to cut down the bucket. Um, probably just a little bit. Alright, now I'll put the seat on. And it's just got these little threaded thingies that'll go through the holes that I've already got in place. And then the seat just clips on to these little nubs. So here's what it looks like inside. Don't worry, that's just garbage. <laughs> uh, but you can see how much of the uh, the funnel is within the opening. And uh, it's nice because the bucket is actually kind of scooted a little bit under where the curvature of the funnel is. So it's not like, you know, two circles meeting like this and the bucket's got a very small opening. It's all the way like there kind of. So anyway, I think good coverage from the two um, openings that are needed to make this work. And that's that. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you like what we're doing here and turn on email notifications so you never miss a video. You can also find extra resources in the description below. We spend countless hours making these videos for YouTube. So if you appreciate our work, take three minutes to watch the video in the top left tile to learn some ways that you can support us for free. We'd really appreciate it.